Hello everybody and welcome back to Pocket Captains Presents The Master of Orion 2. In the last uh, episode, I started a human game and I asked the question, why am I still playing this 22 year old game? And I think I made it pretty clear then and I'm going to reiterate tonight. I play it because, well, I love to play it. When things get a little tense, a little rough, and it's been a rough day, it's been roughly a week since I last played, well... I need to de-stress a little bit. So I'm going back to Master of Orion. It's my go-to. So why am I telling you guys about this? Why did I bother putting it on YouTube? Well, it's the game to which all other games are compared. And I'm really hoping that you know some of the younger players out there who are looking to crave, uh, to fill that craving for a space experience, space combat, space strategy, don't look too quickly at the at the the glitzier games they have out there, some of the games, the older games, they're worth playing. And yes, some of the graphics could use a little bit of love. And there is a new Master of Orion out there, which I haven't tried yet. <gasps> Shame on me. I'm going to. I promise. In fact, I'll probably try it on YouTube. But for the time being, go back to the one to which all are compared and learn why some of us older guys are pretty excited about this game. Even today, I still play it. It's still holding up. Now, in the last time we started off a game, I wanted to get going. I wanted to, I wanted to generate some interest. And I see just a quick review of where we were. There's Soul, some potential there. Poor world, though. Omicron was just a crappy outpost. Nothing going on there. A2 Mine. Well, at least there's something rich, but it's not very big. So we're off to a really rough start for the human empire. There's not much to, to look forward to right now. Automated factories are good. Uh, that one's a ways to go yet from automating factories. That needs a little bit of work. Uh, colony ship. Definitely need a colony ship. But it looks like we're going to need some more freighters. And this world here. Well, maybe we'll move freighter up a notch. I don't remember. I think we might have been human on the way over to help out. But we'll see. Now, before I go too deep into this, one of the best parts of any of these games, one of the most important parts of any of these games, is the research tree. Now, Last time I just sort of plunged in, I remember doing hydroponics, and I remember going over here for research labs, and I'm heading over here to deuterium for fuel. But I thought I'd give you a quick overview of what the research uh, holds for you because it can be a little bit daunting when you see all those different categories. So if you click on the top here, construction, it'll tell you what all there is. Battle pods, survival pods, troop pods. Makes your ship a little bigger, allows uh, crewmen to survive if you have a special hero on board. This adds more crew for uh, space to base combat. Armor barracks, ground defense, fighter garrison, shoot the fighter, shoot your fighters into space to fight back against enemy ships. Spaceport, money, money's important in this game. Battle station, you can start off with a star base in your home world, build star bases, battle stations are the tougher version. Powered armor for your troops. Robo miners for improved construction. Don't miss out on the opportunities for construction, people. Advanced damage controls repairs your ships after each battle without having to go back to a starbase. Assault shuttles, fast missile racks. Shoot your missiles twice in one round. Sorry, the assault shuttles are the ability to send a shuttle over to attack another guy's ship from a distance. Battleoids. Those are troops, but they're only on your planets. They don't get to go into space and fight in space battles, but they're basically armored troopers. Ground batteries, laser cannons from the ground, your best beam weapons go on those. Titan construction, bigger ships. Planetary construction, just what it says, take crappy worlds and turn them into good worlds. Gas giants and asteroids, in fact. Automated repair, will fix your ship during battle, but takes up space in the ship. Recyclotron for construction. Bomber bays, you can launch fighters, folks. You can also launch bombers from your ships. Believe it or not, they do ship-to-ship -ship combat, too, not just attacking planets. Robotic factory, more construction boosts to your guys. Deep core mining, get even more construction boosts. And finding core waste dumps, the ability to get rid of pollution. We'll talk about pollution more soon. Advanced city planning, make your worlds bigger. More people means more research, more construction, more farming. Enough said. Heavy fighter bays, put them on those on your starships and launch some heavy fighters. They use your best point defense beam weapon, by the way. And I think also these would use your bombers too. Star Fortress, the best starbase battle station thing out there. Artemis System Net, planetary defense system, Doomstar construction. Do I need to say more? And advanced 
Believe it or not, don't underestimate these. This does miniaturization and reduce cost, so you can get more things on your ship for less the price. So your ships can be jammed with more and more and more goodies. So that's construction. That's going to be a big one tonight. The other one's going to be big tonight is chemistry. We're going to go down that tree briefly. Chemistry. I'm actually not going to go down to each of these in detail. You get some nice ones like nano disassemblers and microlite, which is good for pollution. But the big one here is pollution control, atmospheric renewers, uh, pollution processors, and missiles. And sorry, the third one is armor. Uh, missiles, better missiles, especially early in the game before you get a decent targeting computer. Beam weapons without a targeting computer is a bit hit and miss, literally hit and miss. But if you get a good missile on board, that will hit the target. There are some missile point defense capabilities, but early in the game, if you're just starting out and you want to know, what do I do to defend my fleet? Don't hesitate to put some missiles on your ships. When they miniaturize, uh, you get the Mercolite, for example. Your old nuclear missiles, which you start off with, they'll actually get down to Merving, which is four warheads per missile. Fantastic attack. Plus, you can jam more of them onto your ship. Um... And then there's also nice things like heavily armoring them, which helps resist point defense. Um, I can't say enough of make them faster. If they're faster, they're harder to hit. Definitely miniaturize as you go. So that and armor, Zordium, that'll get you through. If you get the Zordium and Merculites, by the time you get to here, they'll be Merved Merculites. That is a good early game technology for your attack and defense. So don't hesitate to go up the chemistry between Merculite and Zordium. Remember those two. I'm going to go back for them later. Computers, that's basically your world of research and targeting computers with some nice added goodies in here, like a mission guidance system. That'd be nice. The ability for your, your rockets to actually track to the engine of an enemy ship and disable or destroy the ship faster. Um, physics, now this is going to be a little odd. It's not just beam weapons. There's also, of course, hand weapons. You get some nice things in here. You need to have like a planetary gravity generator, which nullifies your space gravity. But for some reason, you know, heavy worlds become normal, light worlds become normal. Or if you're a low gravity species, all the heavier worlds, but every world goes down to low gravity. So you can do more and be more productive. But they put communications in here. And with communications, you have bigger fleets. So you definitely, definitely need to go up that tree. Not just, those are the hard choices. Do I go with weapons? Oh, there's Battle Scanner. That also helps improve your tactical ability. But do I go Scanners? Well, actually improves your scanning range. But do I want to go with um, Beams? Or do I want to go with uh, bigger communications, better communications, jump gates in subspace? That's, that's another tough one. This game is filled with tough choices. Um, power. Power, like your anti-matter drive engines. Believe it or not, though, um, it's fuel that's range. These drive engines make your ships faster, which means you get from planet to planet quicker and you get early initiative in combat. You also get some beams in here, like Ion Pulse Cannon, which just takes out systems. Sneaky, but fun. Shield capacitors and other boasters, mega fluxers, love those. Adding 25% more space to your ship. And bombs. You find a lot of use for bombs, but sometimes it makes all the difference. Sociology. Uh, Xenopsychology for negotiating with enemy races, Space Academy to make your ships a little better, Astro University, Federation, Galactic, these things here will just take what you have and make them better, better farming, better uh, research, better construction, but this one here takes your natural abilities and just boosts them through the roof. So Alien Management Center, you need to consider this one if you're going to attack other planets and hold them. They can resist and rebel unless you have a management center to keep them in line. Biology, one of my favorites, actually. Cloning centers, soil enrichment, get more, you know, work out of your soil, get more stuff. Microbiotics for increased reproduction. Telepathic training for spy and counter-spying. Terraforming, that'll take some of those crappy worlds and make them better. Weather controller, also good for improving your farming. Heightened intelligence. Love that, Trave. And finally, force fields. Class one, sh now basically it's your shields. Got a little bit of your, uh, some weapons in here too. Anti-grav harness, some nice toys. This is basically the toy tree. There's a radiation shield. This, there's a bunch of shields in there for your planets. Personal shield, stealth field that makes your ships invisible. Stealth suits, makes your spies more invisible. Lightning fields take out missiles. 
There's all kinds of goodies in here. We're going to oh, stasis field to make your ships, the enemy ships just freeze in space. Lots of nice toys in that one. That's the toy one. But believe it or not, if you invest too heavily in the toys before you get some of the fundamentals done, you're going to be pretty well toast. Now I'm going to Terium. Not Tritanium Armor, but Deuterium because I have a problem. I'm not reaching as far as I want to. There's some got to be something better than these worlds. I mean, what have I got? S Tesuji. Poor or poor. You know, stay away from the poor world. You want at least average, preferably rich and ultra rich. Commemorium. Poor, but at least I can farm it. And, of course, Toxic. Well, there's a, an exciting world to, to not visit. Again, now that's Abundant and Swamp. I can work with that. That's the minimum I want. So, when I start building a colony ship, Seki is definitely for consideration. So, let's go ahead and get back to playing enough, uh, talking about how the game works for the moment. Automated factory and colony ship. We'll get more into what it can do briefly. But for now... Automated factories. Oh, right. So we got to start moving some guys back and getting that colony ship co cooking here. Oops, not everybody. Let's have some research going on. Nobody's showing up here to help out, which maybe means I didn't send anybody. Oh, there we go. One settler did arrive. Silly me. I should trust myself. It's a rich world, and I really want that world to get off the ground because I'm going to need it. And maybe, maybe, do I risk it? Yeah, let's send another guy over there. Technically, it's probably a better bet. There's 36,000 reproduction on that world, and I'm going to waste it. Reproductive potential. This one's got 67. I should be keeping them both down, at least one guy, to let them build up a reproductive level, but I really need the, re the richness of that world to get going. So, let's click ahead a few. Am I being too reckless? What's going on? Colony ship in 27, automated factory in 2. I don't want to buy it. I don't want to waste any money. By the way, do we have any leaders? I can't remember. Oh, him? Yes! Absolutely, I want that guy. Commando. Definitely want him, too, for uh, when I go to do ground combat. Any advantage helps. This is my research world with one puny guy in it. So I guess he gets the research leader. And since it's my home world, he should arrive right away. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Leaders. I'm putting you on Saul. Welcome home. Cursus. Now, researcher plus 15, plus 30%, which takes my pitiful little research amount and just boosted it right up. Good. And my settler has arrived. I'm not doing any research on this world. I purely want them to build and get this thing going. In fact, the sooner... These guys start building me colony ships, and heaven forfend if I ever get the numbers up, an actual shipyard. But I need a shipyard world. Badly. Automated factory, it's good. Definitely need the uh, freighters. So I'm, okay, let's talk about pollution. Look at this. Three guys, half of what they're mining is also producing this pollution, which means some of these guys aren't actually built, contributing to the pickaxes, some of them are now having to clean up the mess as they go. Take this off. Well, it's a rich world, so the trade-offs are pretty tight on this world. It's also radiated, so it's not helping me very much. Like, let's look at this world. It's pretty, yeah, uh, pretty craptacular as far as most of the features go. Um, it's radioactive, so it's not getting. Uh, it's it's a tough go. Where where is that world here? Let's see if we can do it this way. Um, the mining world. Small right here we go. That's what I wanted. Max population, no food. Industry, five. That's great. Research per science, three. Not bad. Maintenance penalty, 25%. This world is definitely costing me a lot of my worker strength in keeping it cleaned up. Oh, I said again. Now, if I'm not putting researchers in there, why am I building a research lab? Because it generates five. Re I would put it up there, but it keeps changing. Five research points. I need that. I mean, look at my pitiful research total. And that world can build it fast. Ordinary, I wouldn't waste my time. Oh, the news. A beast that exists partially in hyperspace has appeared. It is feared that it will randomly destroy ships in hyperspace for an indefinite period of time. That monster is a nasty piece of work. <clears throat> I'm stuck. But it's a clue that uh, the... Um, 
one of the one of my enemies is going to be the um oh uh, what are the name of those oceanic trilarians the trilarians are probably out there because whenever that the trilarians are out there they get an advantage they can continue exploring and during hyper those those beasts no that's hyperspace fluxes no there's no clue to the trilarians they may or may not be out there forget what i just said i'm just rambling now had it been a hyperspace flux, it would have been a clue the Trilarians are there. It's not always true, but it's often true. So let's keep going. Because I want the breakthrough. Yes, I can finally explore. The problem for me now is there's a hyperspace freaking beast out there. Now, here's the next interesting question. My, my big three problem, like I really want these, but look at the points are already starting to rack up. And my research is pitiful. But construction's a problem for these bad worlds up here. I could go past automated factories to try for robo miners. Fair enough. Down here, past neural scanner. Planetary supercomputer. 10 research points plus increases the research each scientist does by two. That's quite sweet. But believe it or not, you can't underestimate hollow simulators, which increases the planet's morale by 20%. That's basically 20% to farming, construction, and research. That's a nice big boost there too. And I should seriously consider that one. This is a tough choice. Or, or, consider soil enrichment. Nanomachines. Increasing the food a farmer can harvest by one. That doesn't work on craptacular worlds. But um, that's 400 points or 400 here. 250, but it's a long way up that tree. Which one should I go for? Mm, cloning Center also increases the population rate by 100,000 per turn. But I don't really have a population issue right now. I don't have any planets. I'll hit soil enrichment. I might change my mind. <clears throat> because these four guys... Half my planet here is doing research. I, I'm doing farming. If I could get a few guys out of there and up into the research end of the spectrum, that would be nice. It's a quick hit. Worth considering. I really want to start exploring. Where's that hyperspace beast? This game is not always fair. Oops, somebody's just given birth here. And we have yet another baby farmer. How wonderful. And that's my other paradox. I'm working on colony ships, and I can't launch them with the hyperspace beast is there because sure enough... They'll eat them. Now, how's that fair? Well, I can only hope that one of my enemies are going to get eaten soon. Come on. Let's see you eat one of my enemies. I got 13 turns before this thing's finished. And I haven't explored a single decent world except for Seki. Ugh, very frustrating. I need to get off this rocket into space. Show me something interesting. Click. Click. Now, if you guys don't like the click click, remember that under options, I like the clip clip. But if you do uh, end of turn summer, uh, end of turn wait, turn that off, and it'll just go until next something interesting happens. But I don't like to lose control. There is a bit of micromanagement in this. Where you go, hmm, if I go here, look at that. Nine is the amount of pollution. I'm wasting all this guy for most of it's just pollution. But if I put him here, look at the research boost I get. And since the hyperspace beast is in the way, maybe I'd rather work on the research. Because it's looking pretty important right now. Uh, what's this? Mega wealth for 400. Yeah, I'm going to buy you labor leader and mega wealth. Yes, 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 yes. Now, when you hit reject, don't worry. They're still in there. They hang around for a while because they like you. Uh, he's going to be around for 30 turns. I've got 30 turns to raise the 400, so I have to keep an eye on my money. Oh, I'm free to move again. Hallelujah. Get your butt down there. No chance. No chance. Well, I'm reaching something. You know, that's a waste of my energy. Why don't you stop off at this star first because it's on the way. Let's not waste the chance. One. Oh, how's that colony ship coming? I need the 400, but I need more colonization. What would you do? 188. 
If I were to buy this, it's 124. And I'm going to try it. Oh, what am I building after that? Don't waste any production. I am building absolutely nothing. Colony base, I think. Now, why a colony base? Colony bases go up pretty fast. And there's another potential world for farming. Poor, but it's a good it's a good potential farming taking some of the pressure off the home world. So I want to do it. Colony ship is ready. Jacked up. Good to go. You're on your way to Seki. I would ordinarily wait to see how the other ships are going to do. But there's another colony ship coming down the pipe. Let's wait and see what happens. Soil enrichment. Got to do that. I, oh boy I do want to improve my, my research so neural scanner oh why did I take neural scanner I should have told you scout labs will improve, improve research but only if I put it on a ship and my ship's space is limited security stations controls and monitors the, basically gives you a bonus if you're attacked by marines from another ship you may or may not but neural scanner that's good for adding 10 to your spy rolls and I really want that. I hate it when I get all the best goodies and some other alien comes along and steals all my hard-won research. And if I want to, you know, basically steal from them, I want an advantage. So let's go for the spying stuff. All right. The HAP system is rich and abundant. You know, we can always redirect that ship. No, we can't. But HAP... Looks like a find. It's rich. I need rich. We need a rich world. Trigones. Ultra poor. But it's good too because nobody's going to want to take it and it's a bridgehead to whatever is up there. Maybe that's another race. And they're poor as well, so nobody's going to rush to take that one. But we have a potential way to cross the galaxy to somebody else's territory. Uh, the alien, this is a bit of a cheat, but the aliens are terrible about using wormholes. Absolutely appalling. Uh, but we use them to great effect. It's, it's kind of a hack. Natives. Abundant? That's free farming, folks. Oh, yeah. That is free farming. So we've got two potentially interesting worlds. This is definitely going to be a new colony ship world, just making colony ships as fast as they can. I almost regret sending them to Seki. I didn't know I was going to get quite so fortunate. I'm going to send you back to there. That way you can pop up there as soon as this world's taken. But we definitely have to get out there to these other worlds. So, colony ships, colony base. It's a slow start. Cautious. Rebuilding our finances. Now, if you're having a little tax problem, remember, you can boost this up. But it looks, look at that. You just squeeze in the poor peasants for everything they've got. But there's a cost for that. Look, right now, it's at zero. Okay. And we look at something we're building. Let's look at colony base nine, colony ship 11. Let's just squeeze these buggers to 50%. Now watch. Colony base 17, colony ship 22. See, it's not free. You're taking from their productivity. They're unhappy people being taxed that high. So keep your tax as low as you can. Three out of six. That's good to know. Six is my total command points. Communications will boost that. I'm getting a little bonus from a star base. But two frigates, one non-combat ship are using up my command points. If you go over the limit, it's going to start costing you tax dollars. Same with freighters. They also cost you tax dollars too. Remember that. Keep track of your budget. Hello, Seki. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to take you in it because you're big. And I need big. So we're going to call this one... Let's call this one A3 Garden. like to label the order. So, oh, God. Okay, God is. There's a little spacing thing. It's a quirk of the game. I always find it kind of funny. Um, it, can't ten, it can't handle the big spaces. Now... Farming, that's what he's there for, but let's get him at least doing some work and, and give our future planet some hope. Soil enrichment. Now, don't go too deep in this. I like to throw a few in because I'm busy, but I, I may change my mind. 
don't be afraid to change your mind later on. If somebody suddenly, it turns out there's some Mershan up there. They love to attack. Okay, we're a little short on food now because he's doing that. So let's drop him back into the slot. We still have enough freighters. Oh, I should be sending him some help up there. Because it's going to take him 20 turns, but then my research will take a hit. And the only free world is this one. He's a far away. The nuclear's one is mine. The closest one is mine. If I take him out, it's only a hit of two. Let's send him up there. There's enough freighters to do that. I could take him. Yep, put him back in research. While he's doing this freighter thing, he's not needing any food. He's apparently getting good in-flight service. So you could take somebody out of farming and put them over. That makes life easier. Well, we've colonized our third world, Ga. There's a classy name for a planet, Ga. Let's just see what's up here. And then we're going to have to call it a night because we don't want to go too long. But, oh, the curiosity. I'm finally free to explore. The big hit for tonight was deuterium fuel cells. Woohoo! But uh, I like the pacing of the game. Believe it or not, the pacing is good. Building a space empire shouldn't be that fast. So let's truck up here. Oh, what's going to happen? A plague is broken on on Barcata Prime Colony. That's not one of mine. The disease is a potential to kill millions of Sakra. The Sakra, their great advantage is reproductive genius. And they're probably subterranean, which means they got double the size of the world and they reproduce like rabbits. And where do I? I'm number two. Space fleet strength number two. I find that hard to believe. I think they were running out there exploring when the hyperspace beast was eating their ships and I didn't. That's probably what happened because I haven't been doing anything brilliant to build a fleet. One settler's arrived, food's down by two. Two guys building that stuff. Well, yeah, that's expensive, but for the time being, I, I need a little bit of productivity here because there's some good stuff like hydroponic farms and soil enrichment, and that's going to make this farm even better, so it's worth it to take a hit now, and eventually I will, I'll get a guy in there. So what do we got? Tyrandus. Oh, those aren't bad. Tyrandus Whip Whip Whisperwind, I think, was the name on World of Warcraft. This game predates World of Warcraft by a long chalk. So, that would appear to be that. Definitely, definitely love the idea of... Oh, there's some good worlds. Natives? Yes. And Hap? Well, you know what? When you have a choice between a special like that and a world with a rich, especially if it has an abundant with it, aim for the rich world. Get that productivity going. You can overcome a lot if you can build. So, yep, I think I'm going to have to end it there for tonight. I'd love to finish that. See, this is a one-click wonder. You just want to keep clicking and clicking and clicking. Soil enrichment? You betcha. I want to keep clicking. I want to keep going and going, but I can't. I'm going to stop. i got to show some discipline. Uh... Master of Orion addiction is a terrible thing. So we're going to save the game there. And we'll carry on again next time. Hopefully not a week from now. Hopefully sooner. In the meantime, have fun. Good luck. If you want to visit us, you can come over to www.pocketcaptains.com. We're going to have a Master of Orion 2 page very soon. In the meantime, please don't forget to have a little bit of fun every day. Good night, everyone. Get more tips at pocketcaptains.com.